to you by Podcast City Network. And good evening, everyone. You're listening to another episode of the Deathmatch Russell Podcast. Tonight is really special because I'm going to have on the line tonight, we're going to be talking to a musician who wrote a lot of the themes for the WWF, WCW, and much, much more. We're going to be talking to the one and only J.J. McGuire, and also we're going to be talking about Kentucky Zone Wrestling. And let's see what he's up to and much, much more. Tune in, fans. Fans, we're waiting for the arrival of my guest to appear on this podcast right now. The one and only J.J. McGuire. Stay tuned. Let's do this. Let's rock and roll. Bringing you back to the 80s, the mid-90s. Tracks that you fell in love with growing up as much as I did, too, with all the wrestlers. I believe I screwed up on the theme song, but you know what? Let's just keep on going, JJ. How you doing tonight, man? I'm okay, David. Thanks a lot for having me. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. Glad to have you aboard on the uh, podcast finally. And uh, let's uh, talk some music, wrestling music, and and actually Kentucky Pro Wrestling. How's that? Kentucky Zone Wrestling. Yes, Z O N E. Z O N E. Zone Wrestling. Zone. Yes, sir. Independent all the way, baby. I mean, if you want to see the real action, you got to go independent. You know that's right. Yes, I do. Because you know why? I support indie wrestling 100% every time. And I like to spread the word yes. pro wrestling. Come yes. on. We all get it out Great. there. Thank so, what you been up to, man? So, what's going on with you? Oh, 
just a little bit of everything. I've got a book coming out yeah. uh, in the spring of next year, 2019. Oh, nice. And I've been doing Comic-Cons and making different appearances and uh, doing some different podcasts to let people know that mm-hmm. I have uh, this book coming out next year that has a lot of behind-the-scenes interesting stories, not only just about the icons of wrestling, mm-hmm. but also about the icons of Hollywood and music and a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, man, you're going way past the border. Wow, you're going all over the globe with it. That's awesome. That is awesome. But yeah. uh, uh, So you are the man. So, so let me go through this and say, you, 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 well, you're a musician, and you did a lot of songs for the WWF at the time. Mm. Right, WWF, WWE, and WCW. Yeah, yeah, man. Like you, uh, <laughs> to all the guys, I bet you I know every single wrestler you've done. <laughs> you know, growing <laughs> well, up, that, growing up as a kid, yeah. I would listen to, you know, Junkyard Dog, Brutus the Barber, a lot of the guys that you, uh, I, I've heard from a couple podcasts before, but, uh, yeah, you really, you really, uh, took it to another level, and you brought the music that we, what we grew up on. Well, I appreciate that, Dave, you saying that. I've had a lot of people tell me that, and, and yeah. I want to thank everybody for mm-hmm. listening to all those 114 themes and featured music and bumpers that I did for the Mm-hmm. biggest organizations in wrestling I guess it's ever been yeah but it was just really a lucky thing you know we got in there at the right time mm-hmm. my friend uh, of course and best friend and uh, business partner Jimmy Hart Mouth of the South mm-hmm. we were in the gentries together way yeah. back when in the 70s and mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we traveled the roads up and down uh, in, in the gentries and had hit records and then uh, Jimmy wound up uh, going with uh, Jerry Lawler in the Mid-South Territory and then one day I got a call mm-hmm. uh, from uh, Jimmy, and he said, uh, McGuire, you wouldn't believe this, but uh, Lawler wants to do a record. And I said, a record? What, how's that going to work? Uh, uh, you know, a record yeah. for wrestling? Uh, wait a minute. He said, yeah. He said, uh, it's going to be, Jerry's going to uh, sing on it, and we're going to sell it uh, out, in the, you know, out in the lobby of the matches and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, yeah, count me in. I, I'm open to whatever. And so uh, I went down, uh, and then Lawler called me, and uh and asked me if I'd be glad to do it. And I said, yes, sir, King, I would love to. Mm-hmm. And you must remember, at this yeah. time, uh, WWF uh, hadn't taken off yet. No. And uh, Mid-South was uh, enormous. I mean, they had yeah. crowds like WWE does today, back mm-hmm. at that time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Like, Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat was popular back, you know? I mean, come on, we we loved what, who came to the ring with your mu- your music. came made it, you know? You made it. Yeah, well, possible. I always tried to uh, I tried to write the themes to yeah. fit the characters, and the characters are more over the top and cartoonish, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, during the eighties and whatever, and so I didn't write the music to suit me and try to uh, fit and show off me. I tried to write the music to suit and fit and show off the talent. You know, like mm-hmm. Brutus, you know, doing the strut and everything, mm-hmm. and, uh, super fly diving off the top rope. Yes. And, you know, uh, I, I thought a, I thought a, a, a trumpet sounded like Gabriel's trumpet from heaven blowing. You know, and that's how that started. On the that was the first actual yeah. WWF theme that I did was the uh, Superfly theme, and that's my voice going super, super, Superfly. But what I did is I sampled it yeah. on a keyboard and put it down real low. Mm-hmm. Next thing I know, every rap artist in America and around the world is doing drop sample voices. I think I'm the first person that really did that. No kidding. That's like a yeah. yeah. So, so you were like experiment with the the first voice, you know, voice technology back then. You know, of synthesizers yeah. and you know the synth- mm-hmm. Correct. synthesizers sure. and stuff. And that's probably uh, you know, and the guitaring too, right? You probably did a lot of guitaring too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite guitar themes was uh, the Crush theme. Mm-hmm. Like, dun, 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 yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's one of my faves. Uh, Crush didn't stay in there a long time. Uh, he got hurt and, and mm-hmm. did some other things, and I'm not sure. I think he may have passed away in the interim. Well, one of my favorite tag that. teams, two, two of my favorite tag teams, Demolition and Road mm-hmm. Warrior and Animal of WCW. Come yeah. Come this faster. Yes. Walking disaster, baby. Yep. And that that is one of my favorite uh, guitar ones too. I guess. Uh, right. Like I say. Uh, yeah. Uh, I had to do everything from heavy, heavy, mm-hmm. heavy rock and and uh, music to almost to, to almost a country flavor to yeah. 
jazzy stuff to I mean I had to hit every mm -hmm. every style of music as you remember these characters were all different and had different personas so yeah I had to come up with you know multiple sounds I couldn't just do everything in one genre and I think unfortunately for a long time a lot of the wrestling themes thereafter mm -hmm. were just generic guitar licks over and over and everybody yeah. sounded like they were coming out kind of the same thing to the untrained ear you know yeah 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 and I mean uh, like who was that? Uh, I remember they did that one album. I don't know who who produced it, but uh, the Thousand Maniac, you know, the Pile Driver and the uh, I forget. Oh yeah, yeah, we had music on. Uh, now the first one was, was mostly cover songs. Yes, uh, Land of a Thousand Dances. Yes, I used to play that when I was a teenager. Yeah, in the uh, later sixties, mm -hmm. uh, and a, we were I had a, I was in a top soul band. There wasn't heavy music. No, yet. no. Before heavy music hit. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was it was so, but uh, yeah, uh, it just you know it, the music changed quickly at that it time. Did. You know, and then it, when the music went heavy, mm -hmm. well, I decided I, I went I went heavy too. So I, I actually had my roots kind of in the Motown sound, kind of like Hall and Oates and those guys. Mm -hmm. and, uh, th those guys are a little bit older than me, but uh, mm -hmm. at any rate, uh, that was the that was the, the norm. We did sock hops and yeah, the Sounds Unlimited that I played with was the, uh, we were the top prom band in those years, mm -hmm. you know, all the high schools. Yeah, yeah, college. you would go into the schools and just play and <laughs> mm -hmm. do Yeah, old... it was cool. That's it really I know, people don't think Before about... computers, uh, David, before computers. <laughs> yeah, before I was going to say. Phones, before yeah, yeah. Social media, your social media was to dress up and put some... Uh, Cologne on and meet the girls down at the at the dance hall. You know, you would have a recorder. That's about it. Tape deck, right? That was it. Like a a box tape deck, that's like it. that that old one handle that one handle uh, box, right? <laughs> what that? That's correct. The you old got it, brother. You, you you've seen it in a museum, but that's, yeah, that's I, what we started on. I thought I started on was the real to real. Yeah, and then went on, came up from there with different types of machines, and then finally. Mm -hmm into the digital age, but yes. I remember traveling on a plane to Cleveland to do the first three songs that mm -hmm. we did, yeah. and that was Honky Tonk Man theme uh, on, mm -hmm. on the album, rather, on the Pile Driver album. Yeah. <clears throat> we came in on the second album. I didn't finish that a while ago. The first album was mostly covers and stuff and Land of a Thousand Dances and mm -hmm. things like that, but the second album, Pile Driver, had Hulk on the cover. Yeah. Hulk didn't have any music on that one, Right. but uh, uh, Coco Beware sang uh, Pile Driver on that. Did yes, job. And I yes. Thought, I cannot. I'll play I, him another day. Coco's still out there and doing great. Oh man, I got to reach out to him. He's a great guy. I, I saw last time I saw him actually was in Chicago for a local show that I I went to. It was a, a local promotion called uh, Game Changer Wrestling, and they did a show with another company, Freelance Wrestling Underground. And uh, I went to the Pro Wrestling T shirts shop, and I saw Tito Santana. He he was there, and Coco was there. It was great oh, to see. Tito's a great guy too. Oh, really he's so great. But, uh, yeah, it was just great to see him because, I mean, I've seen him, like, all over the East Coast, like, you know, all the time. I'd go to local shows. Here he is. Here's T here's Coco. Here's Tito. Coco, you know, doing his thing. Yeah, we did the bird, the Birdman thing, dude, the bird, bird, bird. <laughs> yeah, that was a great, and, uh, yeah. And then we also did the, uh, I did the music for uh, High Energy, he and Owen Hart. Mm, wow. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you did a lot. You did the, uh, the, um. Was it the no? Who did the Mountie? That was somebody else. No, wasn't it you? No, no, no. That, that was me. That yeah. was you. Woo. I'm, it, it was actually I'm not the Mountie. Yeah. He yeah. Said, yes. Yes. I'm yeah. not the Mountie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those. Uh, those. You know. The yeah. songs. Uh, really, like I said, they had to envelop and wrap around the character. Uh, I would go, you know, I traveled on the road with WWF and me uh, through all this time. I didn't just sit a thousand miles away and, mm -hmm. you know, and somebody call me and say, hey, make a theme. You know, I went and watched them work. I looked at their outfits. Yeah. I looked at what their finishing move was. I looked at mm -hmm. their gimmicks. I, you know, and then I would go home or go back to the hotel room and then yeah. Jimmy Hart and I would look at each other and go, okay, what do we think? And then I go, here, Jimmy, here's what I think. Yeah, and so then I would uh, play out kind of what I had in mind, and then Jimmy would write the lyrics. Yeah, and then Jimmy would would approve of what I, you know, the music I came up with. Uh, Jimmy plays a a little bit of uh, he plays harmonica real well, mm -hmm. but Jimmy Hart is a fabulous singer. A lot of wrestling fans don't know this. But, no, he you know he was in the centuries with me. Yeah. Uh, beforehand, we were together, and that's how we met and everything. And Jimmy is just a phenomenal singer. 
you know, and a lot of people don't realize that they just heard him sing a little bit on a couple of few of the albums, mm-hmm. but wrestling albums, but Jimmy's a phenomenal talent, but Jimmy Hart mm-hmm. is one of the smartest people that's ever been in wrestling, period. He you has. Know, I'm the music man, and yeah, yeah. I know enough about wrestling, but Jimmy yeah. Hart, yeah. the first famous wrestler that I met yeah. was Sputnik Monroe, mm-hmm. and we were playing in the Gentries down in Florida, and we had one day a week off. Mm-hmm. The Big Daddy's Corporation hired us. We were doing concerts, and uh, we were actually, uh, Steppenwolf and Chicago uh, were underneath us. The Gentries were at the top of the bill because we'd had the multi-million seller. They oh, did in the man. late 60s now. I joined in 72, yeah, yeah. and we did Cinnamon Girl, and it was a hit record worldwide for us. Wow, that's like it's like nostalgia, you know. Like you just think about it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's where it all started. You I know. know. It's yeah. like how Elvis. It's road. like how Elvis started. Everybody else started. Johnny Cash, you name it. You know. It's the. the Funny you say that. Yeah. Uh, we recorded all our Gentry stuff was recorded the same place that Johnny did a lot of his stuff at Phillips Recording mm-hmm. in Memphis, and of course yeah. I met Sam Phillips, a legendary Sam Phillips, on the studio. Right. And his son Knox was our producer. Mm-hmm. But uh, Sam, did you uh, did you ever go to the man. studio? Did you ever check out the studio in uh, Memphis? I did that one time. I went to the Graceland uh, Sun Records. That was really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now Sun is where Elvis. Yes, started, but now yes. Then, there's the money came in. Uh, I know, but uh, it was cool. St- Phillips built Phillips Studio, which was a world class. Yeah, but what, just a little hole in the wall. But, but you know what was really cool? Like, like you, you heard about a story. Like I, I, what caught my eye about like the Elvis. That's alrighty, Mama. Remember how they, mm-hmm. when when that was, uh, you know, he would he would play out in the street or wherever he was, and uh, he had a, I guess, an amplifier, and he stuffed it with newspaper. You could hear it actually. Yeah. Uh, isn't that great? Yeah. Like you yeah. don't like stuff yeah. like that. You don't oh, yeah. you don't think it's people like doing that, you know, to amplify the sound. Well, I guess sounds were different then. You know? I know everything was by uh, just by uh, your elbow grease. You know, you didn't have all this technology to no. from to help you out. You know, it's all raw. You know. Yeah, yeah, you didn't have those heavy microphones, those shiny ones, and, you know, I don't even know what, to call, what they called those back then. I really, What do they call those microphones? You know what I'm talking about? The big, thick, it's like shiny, it's just real shiny. I can't think of the name of that one. Oh, yeah, you yeah, had the, the low electric voice made them, then you had the uh, mm-hmm. big ribbon mics is what they were. Yeah, the yeah. ribbon mics, they had an element inside them like a ribbon that you tie up for Christmas with, but Mm-hmm. That stuff sounds great. That that's what a lot of that warmth that you hear on the old records. Yeah, how it was there. So those microphones mm-hmm. picked up all that warmth. Yeah, but it's 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 amazing. Like just to see the history. Like I I you know I took my cousin there, and my sister there. We were like, let's go to Memphis. You know, something fun to do. You, gotta, oh, yeah. you have to mm-hmm. check it out because that's what like you know right, music was music. But that's right. I, I need to make a trip back out there. That's that was fun. I'd do that again. I'd go up, go see the go see the king's house again. <laughs> well, yeah, the king the king's not gone. He's just on vacation. He's on vacation, but yeah, yeah. But let's uh, uh, so anyway, yeah. So, so you have any stories, road stories? Oh yeah, too many. Most of them will be in the book. Uh, oh, all right. Know, I, let's I did, let's save that for that then. How's uh, that? I, no, I can tell uh, one. I want to always tell about yeah. Andre. Okay. Uh, Andre was real particular about who he let come in the back and be around. Uh, he didn't like Randy, of course. You know, he mm-hmm. he would he said you don't come into the dressing room when I'm here. He just didn't like him for whatever reason. He'd tell him no baby oil. You know, he didn't yeah. like it when he put all that oil on him. Mm-hmm. But uh, Andre liked me because I did magic tricks and stuff with cards, and and Andre loved to play cards. You know, that was his uh, drinking wine and beer and mm-hmm. playing cards was Andre's pastime. But he liked me because I did magic tricks and stuff for him with the cards and everything. And so he make him always, dis- uh, make him disappear. Me, Come back there. <laughs> you make him disappear. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Pull him out from behind his ear and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One time he had his girlfriend. Uh, he was dating a woman that was a news anchor in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And I was in Cleveland at the WWF show. Yeah. And uh, he said, uh, "Jimmy McGuire, would you please sit with my girlfriend? I don't want the boys around her." Oh, and so I said, sure, I'd very be glad to. And so I sat with his girlfriend in the wings, and we watched the matches. And then when he was finished, he came back through there, and he shook my hand and thanked me and patted me on the back and, and all that. And I never forget how, you know, when I shook his hand, my hand looked like a fresh-born baby. I was going to say, his hands are huge. His, it's like a, bigger, than the big, big, bigger than the big show's hand, you know? <laughs> yes, sir. Gigantic, brother. Gigantic. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
and and size boots. Oh my God, those are amazing. Like to oh, yeah. to see that to see his attire. His, you know, I know it's custom. He had to get a lot of stuff custom made for him. You know, so yes, he did. He, he was just such a big man, and you know, he stepped over the rope, and he didn't like it that Big John Stud stepped over the top rope. Yeah, that was his entry. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was. You're right, but. John Studd made his name known, and <laughs> Sons he did. He stepped right over it and went right to town. And now look, look who's in the wings, uh, getting his name out there. His son, you know, John Studd Jr. Yeah, you know, I know it. That's good. Like, it, it, that's the good. Goes on. It, 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 it's like Brian Pillman Jr. is out there. Uh, the, you know, yeah, uh, I've we, seen him too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, just many of the guys that you, I'm sure you, like, done so many WCW guys. Who, who what was your favorite guy to do for WCW? I mean, wow, that's a, that's a, well, I guess Hulk Hogan, because that's the yes. American made thing. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, and, and, of course, I was, I'm driving the Viper. Mm-hmm. Hulk called me and, see, uh, he asked me to drive the Viper from Clearwater uh, up to Orlando when he came back to wrestling in WCW. Mm-hmm. Because he knew that I bought and sold muscle cars, and that was a, a hobby of yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. And I was familiar with all those cars and, and everything. So mm-hmm. he had me drive it up because he had to come up there uh, with his family and bring He brought his kids up in, in a van and whatever. So he had me drive the Viper, and Jimmy rode with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, so on the way up, all of a sudden here, a big Mercedes uh, SL500 pulls up beside me. It's Mean Gene Oakland. Oh, some geez. young girl of our, about 20 years old. And yeah. Then, and, and uh, he said, you want to drag? And I said, you wouldn't have a chance. He said, let's see. So I said, okay. All right. So, so we drag race. We were doing, uh, we were doing. I think I looked down, I was doing about 160. Oh, jeez. And just completely <laughs> yeah. uh, quad track, uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Mean Gene. He wasn't anywhere in the rear view mirror. I mean, we just ran, the Viper just ran off and left him. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I never told Hulk that I did that, but I mentioned something uh, when I texted him something here at, uh, few weeks back i said hulkster i never told you but i was drag racing green jean on the way up to the come back to wcw proper <laughs> in the parade <laughs> can you see the look on me but i'm face. on the trading card i'm actually on the trading card hulk is sitting on the back of it parade style and yeah. i'm driving it but jimmy was running around out the front but it, the picture didn't ca- capture him but it's uh, hulk and myself on the wcw trading card oh wow that's like <laughs> that's pretty cool to you know think you, you got yourself you got yourself on the, you know, a trading card. At, you know, that's pretty. <laughs> think of how much money that would have been back in, you know, nowadays. You know, <laughs> that's good. That's yeah, I was in some uh, promo videos too for WCW. I was in yeah. a promo video for Hockey the Hockey Talk Man when he came, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, I did a promo on that. And there's a couple other things I did, and then I uh, did a thing where Hornswoggle and some of them were jumping around, and I was in one of those. And mm-hmm. they were real nice to give me some uh, feature parts uh, where yeah. I was featured in uh, promo videos. That's awesome. Huh? WCW. I'll have, I'll have to I'll have to go back and scout it out. <laughs> I'll have to watch it. Be like, I know yeah, that guy. Yeah. I know yeah. that guy right there. That's JJ. That's, <laughs> that's the Hurricane. <laughs> yeah, Hurricane JJ. That's, that's me, I guess. But no, yeah. it's just been a... A beautiful, uh, you know, like everybody, uh, life's not a bowl of cherries, but I've had, uh, mm-hmm. I think, more ups and I've had downs. But yeah. I was just fortunate to, everything leads to something else. You never know. It's like my father used to tell me when he was living, mm-hmm. take that first job you get, uh, JJ, take the first job you get. It may not be that good, but you'll meet somebody and you'll get a better job. And that's true because mm-hmm. by playing in the gentries and, and when I went to audition for the gentries, I didn't know Jimmy Hart from Adam. Yeah, uh, our agent that was booking our band that I was playing with up here in Kentucky, mm-hmm. which now is uh, two of the guys that's in the the pop country group uh, Exile. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were in a group in Lexington called Powder Keg, mm-hmm. and uh, our agent booked us in Florida. And then uh, so we played down there for a few months, and we came back, and the band broke up. The agent called me and said, "You know, I've been talking. I'm also booking the Gentry some." And they're needing a drummer. Would mm-hmm. you like to audition? Of course, I play all the instruments and everything. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I said, yeah. So uh, I called this guy named Jimmy Hart. Didn't uh, never heard of him. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, well, I'll just tell you this: we've got Jerry Lee Lewis's drummer mm-hmm. auditioning, and we've got uh, a drummer that played with Ray Charles for a while. I said, well, you know, those guys are real good, but they're not progressive rock a drummer like I am. Now I had double bass drum set. Mm-hmm. So this is a time when double bass, I, hardly anybody had them. And yeah. 
So I, I took it down to Memphis. I said, if you like me, you, uh, you, do, you can pay half my expenses coming down. If you don't care for me, no hard feelings. It doesn't cost you a dime. Hmm. So he said, okay. So I came down and did the audition. And uh, I did. we played a song called Going Down by Don Nick. Mm. And uh, I put, oh, you played the double bass on it. And I thought I, they stopped the song in the middle of it. I thought, well, I scared them with that double bass. And they didn't say much. And then they kind of conferred together Jimmy and his guitar player, Wes Stafford at the time, who was kind of his uh, band leader. Mm. And <clears throat> so they, they whispered each other. And then uh, 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 Jimmy walked out in the hall, and I thought he was leaving. And I thought Wes was going to say, well, thanks for coming. You know, I, I figured, well, I scared them with that double bass. And then he walked up to me, and when Jimmy came back in, they both came up to me and reached out and said, Welcome to the band, McGuire. And I about fell over. I went, I thought I scared you all that double bass. And they said, No, man, that sounds unique. We want that. We like that. Those other guys were rockabilly type drummers and a right. weight, but I was, uh, you know, I was really pounding pretty hard like a bottom or whatever there, you know, the double bass. And mm -hmm. So that's where it all started. And the next day we went to Florida and we were down in Florida for two years doing concerts. And then the Big Daddy's Corporation mm -hmm. hired us to play their series of clubs. They owned the three level club there in Daytona mm -hmm. on the pier there at the beach. And then they had them all up in all the major cities. So they signed a contract with us for a whole year to play exclusively at their clubs and made us a real sweet deal and gave us a house to live in in every city rather than just a, a motel room or whatever. And yeah. So that's kind of where it all kicked off. But know, then, but then also you all, also you, uh, you premiered, you actually, your, your musical got you on TV as Thunder in Paradise, if I'm correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's correct. That's yes, sir, David. It sure did. Yeah. Uh, I actually, this is kind of a funny story too. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy called me and said, "Well, they've got uh, they've got an opening theme for the show, which they're not thrilled about, but mm -hmm. they have nothing for the end theme." And so uh, we got a chance. To, I told them that we could that we'd like to try to submit something for them. So they called me. He called me, and so I went down to uh, Disney World, where mm -hmm. the whole show wound up being shot. And Burke Bowman and Schwartz were the producers. They're also the producers of the famous Baywatch show, which yes. wound up writing. Uh, a song called The Pelican Man for Baywatch also, mm -hmm. and Jimmy wrote the lyrics for it that was the highest rated Baywatch show of all time, but back to what yeah. I was saying before. So <clears throat> they sat in front of us, about three feet in front of us. I mean, if we had sneezed, we had sneezed all over them, mm -hmm. looking right up our noses. And so I took my drum machine and my keyboards. I played the bass with my left hand on the left-handed keyboard and mm -hmm. then played the regular parts on a regular keyboard. Right. And the guitar part I had pre-recorded. Yeah. So anyway, it sounded like a whole band. And Jimmy sang it to him. When the sun goes down in paradise. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, so we put, we played through it. As soon as we hit the last note, they leapt out of their seats and started hugging us, and shaking our hands, yeah, yeah, yeah. And going on and on, and said, "Brother, that's what we want right there." Yeah. And then they and then Greg Bonin, uh, yeah. one of the producers, came to me and said, "McGuire, how long are you down here for?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, Mr. Bonin, uh, uh, I just." I packed four pairs of underwear and socks. And <laughs> I just came down to play the theme, and I figured, uh, you know, that'd be it. Either way, if you took it or you didn't, and I'd be home the next day or whatever. Yeah. He said, well, you better get out to Target and buy you plenty of underwear and socks because you're a character on the show. Oh. I went, hello? What? Hello? Yeah. Hello, am I dreaming? Yeah. And I said, oh, really? Uh, he said, yeah. He said, who? He said, we uh, and he turned around and he told the producer's assistant, said, yeah. fire that Jamaican band we've been using on the beach. We don't need them anymore. Oh, jeez. And so <laughs> yeah. they ran out and fired them right there. And then the next thing you know, and then Jimmy and I wound up doing the feature music for the show as well, most the majority of it, yeah. the end theme. Mm -hmm. And then we, we were both characters on the show, too. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That was like a good, you know, perfect what a, what a lucky break. I, I mean, know. Uh, my whole life has just been like falling through a door, you know. Most people fall through a door and they break their nose. I fall through a door and I'm I'm uh, smelling like a rose somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. R riding on boats, doing this and that. Come on, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's. I guess it's the luck of the Irish. That's all I can tell. And then, yeah, like the time I told Vince McMahon the story, see my grandfather mm -hmm. saved the life of Strangler Ed Lewis, who was the Hulk Hogan in the late twenties and thirties mm -hmm. and forties. Right. And my, my father used to tell me a story about Strangler Ed Lewis that he and my, my dad, my future dad to be, mm. my dad was only about 19 or 20 at the time. They went to Lexington, Kentucky, and my grandfather was a doctor, Dr. McGuire. He's a surgeon. Yeah. And uh, he loved wrestling. 
So he always had ringside seats. So they were sitting down there at the opera house one night. Strangler Ed comes out. He's chewing gum going to the ring. Mm -hmm. All right. A fan slaps him on the back. He gets choked for real. Yeah. And and starts to turn blue and everything. Oh no! And so they got on they got on the megaphone. Yeah. And said if there's a doctor in the house, well, Granddad saw it. He climbed over the rail or rope over they used at the time. Right. And uh, he he hammered him or whatever he did and yeah. got the gum out of out of his throat. Yeah. And so Strangler was just uh, I mean uh, un unbelievable. Felt unbelievable about you know about that. So he told Granddad and my father, future father to be. He said, come backstage, uh, if you will, when the show's over, and, and I want to talk to you. And so uh, Strangler told my grandfather and my dad, he said, uh, Dr. McGuire, you saved my life out there. He said, so if you want a new horse and buggy mm -hmm. or a newfangled car, <laughs> uh, you name it, you've got it. Oh, man. And Granddad told him, he said, no. No. I think the Hippocratic oath to save people and do things for people, I can't accept that. Yeah. But he looked down at my father, and then he looked back at Strangler, and he said, my grandfather said, but Strangler, you know, li lifetime ringside seats would be pretty good. And mm. Strangler said, done. Nice. Well, I told that story years later to yeah. Vince. Yeah. When, when we got going with WWF. Yeah. And Vince shed a tear, and, and I wondered, why, why did Vince... A cry on that. Why did he shed a tear on that? Because he did. And then years later, I, re I figured it out. I realized what it was. Mm -hmm. Is uh, the history of wrestling, if you read about it, Strangler Ed Lewis and his promoter were the creators of the undercard. There was no undercard until they created it. Mm -hmm. And then, fast forward up into later into uh, time, decade, a few decades later, Strangler and his promoter were very integral in the helping of the formation of capital wrestling, which mm -hmm. became... W W F. Yeah. Now and then, decades later, I was born, and then look what I, happened to me. <laughs> I wound up in the yes. wrestling business. In I a know. Way. I know. I don't know, and made it's it freaky. It's almost paranormal, brother. That's it, all I can tell you. And then you tell a story every single time. It's great. It's good to tell people because they don't know, and this, this is stuff we need to know. No, they don't. They and, don't. and a lot of famous wrestlers aren't familiar, and they've yeah. heard about Strange Fred, but they haven't really read anything about it. You know, and I, yeah. I, I like people to realize that how important Strangler Ed Lewis was to the to wrestling. Period. Here's another question. Um, mm -hmm. Who did the music for the the uh, Coliseum home videos? I don't know if the you... The Coliseum home videos. With somebody... For years, the fans blame because yeah. they go, well, when I see Brutus come out and I see Superfly and I see so-and-so and, -so yeah. and I, I see Million Dollar Man, and why isn't there theme music there? Yeah. Well, the, re the reason why is because the company wanted people to pay oh. extra money to oh. buy the music on, yeah. C on records or CDs and tapes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was... That's that... why... But now, I made a deal with WWE uh, just a, a few years ago mm -hmm. where now now they can use the original theme music uh, as they wish, but mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't. They didn't want to do that for financial reasons, and yeah. that's basically the answer to your question. They wanted people to, to buy the music separately. Yes, on, you know, on, on a, a digital, on yeah, 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 on the digital, on the CDs, when it was CDs, you know. Now yeah, we have, when we started, it, it it was just records and cassettes. Now look uh, where we are. Look how we're we're on iTunes and Stitcher, this and that, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there wasn't any uh, CDs yet. And no, CDs are right there. CDs came out in the early eighties. MP3s. So <laughs> MP3s. Yeah, then onto that. Now, now everything's downloaded, and CDs are just about to disappear. And digital. Know? Everything's digital on our cell phones now. It's amazing. <laughs> You don't even have to go to a sure. don't even have to turn on a computer screen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, uh, time goes on and things change, you know. Uh, I know. Um, uh, my parents' time, you know, they, uh, yeah. well, they liked the big band music. I wasn't, my parents were 42 years old when I was born. Right. My father was a World War II veteran, mm -hmm. so I barely made it into this world, brother. And yeah. For all this to happen for me, but now I was able to play the piano Almost from birth, uh, when I was two or three years old, I was able to sit on the piano and play Silent Night and, mm -hmm. you know, typical songs like that. And they they realized, wait a minute, there's something here. So my mother was real smart and my aunt, and they put me into classical music training. So I went into classical studies at five years old. And so I've got a background in music that's very solid. And but most classical players and whatever, they play by yeah. music and they're not too much on Living, well, I'll tell you what. I was, I'll yeah, I started out yeah. living. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. My nephew and my niece play piano, and they are, you know, 
they're blessed to be playing, you know? Like, they just, mm-hmm. it comes natural, you know? They, uh, they took up piano, but I remember the one time, my, my nephew came with me for my birthday, they surprised me for a birthday party, and the, you know, you know, the guy at the bar would play the electric keyboard, so he taught him some music. <laughs> he was hooked, he was hooked, you know? It's like, he really got into it. <laughs> He got, well, it was, paid off for me. I'm so thankful that they that they put me in formal training there, man, because that gave me the ability to play yeah. uh, multiple instruments. So the majority of the things that you hear that, yeah, yeah. that I did in, in the Jimmy Hart are all, uh, I'm playing the majority of or all the instruments. I'm playing everything. Everything. So you're the one-man band. The one-man band. You didn't have to hire a band or yeah. anything. You're you know, the, I was able to play it all, and Jimmy sang it or wrote the lyrics, or, or Jimmy would make suggestions like, well, where I think it ought to be a little faster. Or, you know, something like that, you know, but together, mm-hmm. we are the true masters of wrestling ring music, brother. It I, turned out that way. I did, and music's, look at, I used to listen to it every single night. <laughs> I listen to it whenever I play, you know? <laughs> People tell me that, that blows my mind, you know? It's uh, like, I'll play uh, it. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Bobby Blade, that was a uh, yeah. independent wrestler down here in Kentucky for years, he's retired now, but he said, I used to lie in my bed at night, just like what you're saying, he said, I listen to you. The entrance theme music you all did more than I did the top 40. That's what, he, what a lot of people told me. Mm-hmm. I'm it's, blown away by that. I yeah. really am, and I appreciate that. And I, I want to thank everybody for making those comments. How, how, and for how, I want, how, thank you all, really. I want to say, how, how's it doing on like iTunes? And I'm probably sure it's like out there. It's probably killing it. You know, it's probably like top, oh, top, oh, yeah. it, top it, numbers it, are probably like, there. that's good. Sure yeah. that, that's like pretty, uh, you know. Because we, we do our podcast, we check the numbers and ratings, and like you know, we'd be like, "Wow, this is awesome!" That the, you guys are actually you get more, you know, listeners than you think, and it's like, "Wow!" Just think, oh yeah, thanks to the digital medium. Uh, I know. You know, the, it really. It, 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 this, I have a request from Russia and yeah. Ukraine and France and everywhere. People wanting to know if they can uh, find more of our music and so forth. You know, I'm just yeah. going away and. and that I, you know, for years after it was done and time went by a little bit, I got married and had some kids and stuff, and then had, I hadn't forgotten about it. But I just figured, well, that was something that was fun that happened at the time, and people yeah. loved it. But now everything's different. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, here I've got a 15 year old son. Yeah, and he comes home uh, here about two years ago, mm-hmm. and he says, "Dad, the kids at school keep asking me if you if 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 my dad is that wrestling music man." <laughs> And he said, Dad, here, I've got a list of about 22 people and my friends that want you to text them and tell them if it's true or not. So yeah. I did. Dad, can I you play yes, the yes. song? Can you play I him a song? The, I am the wrestling music man. <laughs> can you play him a song today, Dad? You know, here, hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my son Marshall, he doesn't, he doesn't brag yeah. or run yeah, around yeah. and talk big about it. And really, I never did either. I never no. brought much up about it uh, no. until he came home and... Yeah. Told me that, and I, I realized if, if kids in grade yes. school and high in high school and yeah. middle school are interested to know who I am, then there must be more to it than what I thought. And so I decided to come forward yeah. and do these shows like with you and talk and yeah. let people know really the history of how it really was. And come to Comic Cons and conventions and this and that. It's great when you meet people yeah. in person. I want to meet you in person. I'm gonna to have to do that sometime. Even I have to go to a wrestling oh, show. Me too. If I have to go to a Kentucky for a wrestling show, I'm going to Kentucky. How's that? If I have to make a flight that and great. make a flight and go sit fr- sit front row, I probably could be taking care of them. Sure, you know. Oh yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Well, I'm all over the storylines in in our uh, <laughs> KZW wrestling. You know, I bought yeah. into the company and. I was just selling merchandise. Uh, the, a friend of mine that, that works for the company called me and said, would you like to have a table? And mm-hmm. I thought, well, yeah, that'd be a good way to start out, kind of. Well, yeah. next thing you know, here I am all over the whole thing. So I bought into the company. And yeah. uh, the, the first day that my wrestler's license came in, mm-hmm. the first show that I did that night, I had uh, actually knocked down two of the heels. And, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, and so, so I came in like a vengeance. And I told them all this cheating going on and, Pulling objects and carrying on. These, this isn't death matches. What we're doing right here. Yeah. I said, uh, so we're we're changing the whole ball game in the face of the planet here, brothers. Yeah. And they didn't like it. And the heels all had fits, and everybody threw down real big. But mm-hmm. I've shaped them up pretty good so far. And I've got a show Saturday night too. Oh, I'm awesome! Awesome. I, I I would love for you to uh, send me some of your talent to come on my show. I would love to have them 
on my podcast. Oh, we can do that. We we got that, some stellar talent. Uh, I would, Crutch and Rippick, uh, uh, yeah, Eddie B and uh, females. Richard Oblivion. I mean, we've any got females. I love females talent. too. They're great. You know, bring on the female too. Tell yeah, the bomb shelter killer Michelle Myers. Awesome. Yes, yes, yeah. I'd like to do that sometime. We'll have to plan that. All right, business after the after the show, folks. Don't hear this now. <laughs> You know, I, I always <laughs> yeah. try. I always try to, yeah. But no, that's. I'm so proud of you. You, that's like the how wrestling or, and you. How do you, you guys draw a good crowd? Oh yeah, we we did the Apple Festival over here in Liberty, Kentucky, mm-hmm. uh, like last month, and uh, we drew uh, almost 700 and some odd people. Holy smokes! Outside. That's good. That, <laughs> yeah. And then on another front, yeah. Uh, OVW Ohio Valley Wrestling came down to mm-hmm. the Center for Rural Development here. We outdrew them at our shows that we do. Yeah, I mean, that, that show in Liberty outdrew them. I think they only had less than a hundred uh, selling uh, buying tickets. Mm-hmm. This, pa- this past this so, past Saturday, I had a show in my hometown, and we sold out. We had about a three hundred plus crowd. <laughs> That's yeah, good. Our crowds usually uh, yeah. vary anywhere. Uh, a, a low crowd for us yeah. is about a hundred and fifty at a worst case. Yeah, yeah, but, but you know what? It crowd, doesn't matter. We're we're, we're there for the wrestling. You know, I always like. I don't care. I just, I'm there for the wrestling. I I just like. Okay, sometimes oh, yeah. you're gonna have your downfalls. Sometimes you do. You know, it's gonna be a low show. Oh, weather, weather. Yeah, weather. weather football games. Yeah, go I know. And realize whatever, but uh, but we get we, out we there. We work every Saturday. Yeah. Every Saturday we work across the state. Mm-hmm. But you got a big show coming and, uh, up. You're talking about big show this Saturday, right? Awesome. Yeah, Thanksgiving Throwdown. Ooh, and we, we and we're bringing in some good friends from some other companies. Mm-hmm. And we've got uh, T- Trash Can Graham. Mm-hmm. He's he's unbelievable. This guy weighs about four hundred pounds. And, oh jeez! Uh, like like yeah. about four guys who you know can run at him and try to hit him with everything they got. And, yeah, and he's just like a an un, un, immovable, unmovable force. Yeah, but I think he's coming in, and we've got some special guests coming. And uh, oh, nice! You know, we we poured on pretty good around the holiday time, and then yeah. we've got a, um, a hardcore Christmas too. Mm-hmm. We only do one real hard, one hardcore match usually a year, yeah, uh, and that's around Christmas time. So mm-hmm. around Christmas, we're going to have the hardcore mm-hmm. uh, two match. Yeah, <clears throat> hardcore Christmas two. Oh up. wow, that sounds like it'll be fun. I wish I was closer. I'd go all the time. <laughs> I would, I'd go. Yeah, that's fun. I'd go all the time. We give the people their money's worth. We sure do. We give them their money's worth. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of people come up to us after the shows, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, and tell us. You know, we went to the WWE show in Corbin, which isn't far away from here. Mm-hmm. It only like forty-five miles or something. And they said, you know, y'all's action and what y'all are doing. Is we enjoyed this show more than we did that WWE show. Mm-hmm. Well, we we don't stand around and talk uh, for three hours. We get in there and do and, your thing and mix yeah. it up right off the bat. Yeah, you know? get in there and show show show. It's what it's about. I mean, show the show, brother. You know, I mean, you think I want to spend got. thousands of dollars at WrestleMania? Come on, like I like you know. No, where am I going to be in an indie show? Come on, you know. It's where wrestling is, oh, yeah. you know, local, far away. If I have to travel, I'll travel. I love it. It's, it's the way we love life. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you can spend. And the indie thing's bigger than ever. I mean, uh, it indie, really indie is. is. It way is. Big, uh, it, it, big. I know. Look at it now, man. It's, it's <laughs> Japan. Yes, I mean, yes, New Japan's coming well, to people New. Want, David, people want variety. They do. They do. And you must understand that, that WWE, yeah. WWF and E gave myself and many of us our. Mm-hmm. Our biggest thing that we've done and been a part of, and I want to thank Vince and yeah. everybody. Of course, now Vince and Linda McMahon owned the company back then, and yeah. it was different. You could go right right to Vince and talk to him, and now it's a corporate thing and <coughs> all that. And then, right. But actually, WWE is, nowadays is really mm-hmm. more for the casual wrestling fan. Yeah, yeah. I'm not knocking them. No, but the NXT, and maybe the, you know, they maybe have the majority of fans in the world are. Are uh, mm-hmm. that kind of a fan, but uh, it, it is the casual fan. Mm-hmm. I mean, the hardcore fans like yourself and yeah. part of that, and Ro- our friend Robin Nelson and everything. Yes, you know, shout out to Re- Robin Nelson. What's going on in the independent world? Yeah, you know, there's just more happening. 
There sure. is, there is, and like where our friend uh, <laughs> Rob, uh, excuse me, Everett, he's around a lot of wrestling too. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, you know. Yes, sir. Like yes, he sir. said, like he oh, says, Everett. he like our friend Everett down there. I know he's he's close to what five minute away walk to the bar, Jimmy's bar. <laughs> it's crazy. I know it. No, I have no, I, I can't great. I can't wait till I step foot in that place. Eventually, <laughs> that's happening. You know, I'm gonna make my journey and see him. <laughs> he wants me to come down. I gotta go down there. I think in January we're planning something special. I think Robin Nelson and myself are going to make a trip down uh, closer to the spring sometime. Uh, yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, in like January, I think we're supposed to be playing like a big, huge show, podcast, mm-hmm. you know. Like get in a Florida's group. full of uh, mega independent wrestling. In that Absolutely. M- MLW, I think, is one of those big companies that's in the area. Mm-hmm. They're always doing shows, <laughs> but I have, but Rob is going to hook us up, I think, and try to get us tickets. I can't wait. I'm excited. <laughs> you know? Well, the Hulkster's back. He, he yes. He gets to do Star. Heard about what he did at the Crown Jewel event. He kicked it off as a hosting. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Like I said, I mm-hmm. tell people I'm glad that Hulk's back in there because he really is one of the most uh, important people in wrestling that's ever come along for the time, especially. And yeah. I hope it graduate toward where we are today. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I always tell people, I said, you know, we all make mistakes. We all put our foot in our mouth somewhere along the way. Yeah. We all goof. The You know, being a human is being part part goof. Uh-huh. And you just try to learn the older you get to try to put that goof part uh, on the lower part of your spectrum. But, you know. Like, uh, I always I'm tell my story. Like, I always tell. Yeah, and, I'm sorry. Oop. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I always tell the story about me and my father growing up, you know, WrestleMania 5, Atlantic City, New Jersey. We went to our. I went to WrestleMania five. Me and my dad sat in the nosebleeds way up top. We were five rows. I was there. Huh? I was right there. I was. I was sitting in the box with our president of the United States today. I was sitting in the same box with uh, Bret Hart's parents and uh, our president, President Trump. No kidding. I was way up top in the and no- I met Trump there, and people always ask me. Yeah. Did you realize when you met Donald Trump and spent that time with him at WrestleMania five? Did you realize that he'd be a president one day? I said, oh, well, for all I knew, Vince McMahon might wind up being president at that time. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, but I sat I said, up there. But, no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, but I sat up there with the nosebleeds with my dad five rows away. Guess who was doing commentary? George, Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse the Body. You know, and I'm yes, like, sir. and I'm holding my Mega Power sign up for Hogan and Fluorescent. Or I was excited as a kid. It was great. It was a great experience. You know, you hear the thump of the yes, ring. From, you heard the echo. Show. It really was. It was I, a, I remember it that too. was a really great. I'll never. I have watched that all the time too. I could never watch. Get enough watch that. You know. And I liked it because right before the event, yeah. I won eleven hundred bucks on a slot machine. Oh, there you go. Well, I couldn't yeah. gamble. I could. I could have bought it. I could have been. I could have bought a milkshake. That yeah. was probably about it. You know. <laughs> I could. Yeah. I, no, I, I, told, I told Jimmy when it was over. I said Jimmy, I said you wouldn't believe it, but on the way on the way in, you know, up to the box, I said uh, I stopped down in the, in the uh, yeah the uh, casino, casino and, and I won eleven hundred bucks. Yeah. He said, well, don't spend it all in one place, Jimmy. He told me. <laughs> no, I won't. Don't worry. No, that, it was amazing. But that, to think me and you were in the same building <laughs> and you played the music. You sure were. In the, in the music yeah. of the Demolition and Hogan, you know, or blasting around or all the wrestlers, you know? Amazing. Just, yes, sir. That was a great event. I'll, I enjoyed that. And I've never been to Atlantic City. And yeah. actually, I haven't been back since. <laughs> They got the Hard Rock Casino. That's the brandest newest hotel that just opened. <laughs> that's like the new. That's yeah. be- it's beautiful. Yeah. All the music instruments yeah. and all the. I love it. Yeah, you know? it's not like it used to be. It's, be. it's it's slowed down a little. You know, it it lost a lot of businesses. You know. Oh yeah. Well, Vegas is. It's tough to beat Vegas. Yeah, know? I know. I don't know. But what are you gonna do? You got you got wrestling and. I mean, a lot of casinos anywhere. I, I just hopefully in December I'll be going back to Mohican Sun and. In, in uh, Rhode Island, I can't wait to go back there, up in that neck of the woods. And actually, my yep. one of my cousins actually is an architect, and he helped he built Triple H's house. Oh, is that right? Yes. Wow, that's interesting. Isn't that cool? Actually, that's no, cool no, no. Fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, his property. Yeah, it's insane. He showed me pictures. I was like, this is crazy. This is insane. I know, like, and I'm like, like my co- cousin's like ten minutes from the headquarters too. So it's like, you know, like wow. 
and I, I didn't realize I had a neighbor, my good friend from school, his his brother actually worked like three doors down from that office. <laughs> you know? It's unbelievable. Never got connections. Well, wrestling, wrestling takes you into a lot of venues. I mean, I've never thought, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've met more A-list movie stars through the wrestling, like Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. I could go on all night, all the A-list, A-listers that I've met through the wrestling business, you know, that were yeah. big fans and are big fans of wrestling and mm -hmm. We were just lucky, you know, when we got involved in this, it was right when all these icons like Hogan and Savage and mm -hmm. Demos and yeah. everybody, uh, Million Dollar Man, mm -hmm. everybody and came down there uh, right during all that time. And we were, the timing was fortunate for us that we had that stellar talent, you know, to do the music for, you know, that, that stayed with the company forever. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we were just fortunate and lucky that we were able to provide a service that fit what they yeah. needed and a lot of elements there came together and it was just uh, the cosmos lined up right brother and yeah. there we went yeah what, what, and here we and here we are what what are you thinking about doing you gotta i'm sure you're gonna have a lot of projects for your i'm sure you have a lot of projects you're gonna be working on pretty soon you know oh yeah 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 i've got i've uh, i've got a couple of uh, major screenplays that I'm in the process of pitching right now uh, to mm -hmm. Universal and Paramount. Oh wow! Or Paramount. Yeah. And uh, look at you. I've been working on that. You're like Mr. Hollywood. Uh, You're like Mr. Musical Hollywood now. <laughs> yeah, I lived in Hollywood. I worked for Glen Glen Sound Company in Hollywood. Oh really? Uh, is it? Yeah, and uh, that's where I met uh, all the a lot of the movie uh, greatest movie stars that's ever lived and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Garner and Farrah Fawcett and. Uh, Gene Simmons, uh, he, they, uh, we did the runaway movie that he did. Mm -hmm. Um, I met Gene and Gene came and he, uh, he came to the screening. Yeah. They always wanted me to work screenings because the celebrities liked me because I knew how to, I wasn't nervous around them or whatever. And they, they right. all liked me. So they always put me on the detail, you know, of the major theater in Glen Glen for mm -hmm. the debuts for just the producers and their friends and yeah. families and the industry people. So I met uh, all sorts of celebrities that way. But Gene Simmons of Kiss came in one night mm -hmm. for that uh, the debut of, for all the insider people for Runaway. Yeah. And Tom Selleck was in that movie too, in Kirstie oh, Alley. Oh, jeez. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, and, and so uh, Gene came out right in the middle of the, of the screening. Gene came busting out, and I'm standing out in, in the foyer area, mm -hmm. and he says, he says, man, he says, do you think that I'm worth a damn? And I said, well, what do you mean, Gene, in music or in the yeah. film? Yeah. He said, well, both, brother, he said. He said, well, really, the film. Yeah. And I said, Gene, I watched them put it together uh, in the last few days when they were putting it all together. Mm -hmm. You're fabulous. You are, you are one of the greatest bad guys I think that's ever been in film, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. And he said, you really think so? He said, I, I don't know. He said, I don't like to watch myself up. And he said, well, come out to the limousine with me and, and talk to me for a while. He was all nervous. I said, uh, do you want some coffee or something like that? <laughs> yeah. He said, yeah, how about I just want my coffee black, bring it out. So I went out and sat in the limo with him for about yeah. 30 minutes, and we talked about music and yeah. Hollywood and everything. Gene is a beautiful person. He, he is, uh, make no mistake, Gene Simmons oh, is a genius. He's still and he's also a great, a great guy, whether you like their music or not. Oh, fantastic uh, music. I grew up on it, you know. He, he is he is more than than Kiss, believe me. Kiss uh, Gene Simmons is bigger than Kiss, believe. Me. I could tell you some two stories. I could tell you some fun stories about my dad, about my dad and myself. Has this, but ready for a, for a celebrity status for musical? Are you ready? Always ready. Always uh, ready. Okay. Well, well, my dad dad works in, worked up in Long Island, right at a he's a he used to be a he worked for a. Selling filters for diesel trucks, right? Big, big company. And uh, he went into a restaurant one day, and this lady was in there. He didn't, uh, so he walked right in, got a seat for, you know, at a table at a restaurant. And uh, the lady said, Madonna's going to be here tonight. Madonna's going to be here tonight, like doing, a, I guess, a big signing or something. So my dad got, got a business card. Threw, threw, went back to his hotel room, threw a suit on, and said, "Oh, hey, hey, Sarah!" You know, like the lady there, just to get a, his foot back in the door. He sat down next to Madonna the whole time and just had dinner, enjoyed. It. And then, and then as he was leaving, Madonna said, 
Goodbye, Jack. You know, it was really like, isn't that great? Oh, that's great. That's so you like crashed a party, a Madonna party, when she was making a big signing for New York, New York deal. You know, <laughs> but then my story, I love telling my story. This is like, this is like cool because I never like, you know, my sister had a hot New Year's rural, you know, nice New Year's party, families around, friends are around, and uh, this guy, this guy and this this his son come walking in. Well, I'm, we all go out in the kitchen and gather out. You know, we all go for looking for food in the kitchen, as always. You know, you look for whatever's in the fridge. And his, his dad, his son goes, Dad, I want some Bing cherries. I want some cherries. Right? And uh, and I said, and I, I, I'm like, hey, I, I go for some, we go for some cherry pie. And he's like, and I was like, he's like, that's my song, man. What? Cherry pie warrant. It was it was C C Deville of Poison. Oh really? Yes. Oh, Isn't that awesome? Like you would not think. That's, that's awesome. And he actually had a. You just never know, brother. I no. Mean, you never know. You might just uh, turn a corner and there somebody is. You know. Now that yeah. kind of reminds me in the same era. Uh, my entrance thing that I come out to. I come out at the first of our KZW show mm -hmm. and greet all the people between the ring and the rail and shake their hands and mm -hmm. pat the babies on my head. And yeah. Thank for coming. And, yeah. And whatever. But my theme music. I've got uh, Vince Neil is singing it. Uh, it uh, we did an alternative Thunder in Paradise theme song mm -hmm. that Vince Neil wanted to be on the show because he was dating Heidi Mark, who was the female principal on the show. Mm -hmm. And but he he wanted uh, too much money to be um he wanted to be on X amount of episodes and so forth but they didn't want to pay the money for for that what he wanted and everything right. so it didn't work out but uh, I wrote the theme and Jimmy wrote the lyrics and I played all the instruments on it and then a special guest uh, Pat Travers played uh, wah wah guitar on it with mm -hmm. me and uh, that's my theme music that I use when I come out to KCW but Vince Neal yeah. is singing it and Vince came down and hung out with us and hmm. what a real nice guy he was you always would read all these crazy things about him biting yeah. at the yeah, airports yeah, yeah. and drunk and carrying off yeah. but man I'm telling you this guy uh, he was so polite and such a a nice yeah, it's person. like it was like you know, C. C. Deville wasn't even drunk or nothing. He had soda the whole night. No, a lot of that pie. You know, yeah, that I know, I know, I know. But yeah, it was amazing. I got to see, I got to meet a musician. You know, like you wouldn't think, like a part of a band, like you know, Poison of all bands. You know, I mean, come on, that's like classic. I remember going when they first came out. Yeah, a friend of mine that, uh, uh, that moved to California. He rode out there with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, we they had a big show at a club called the Country Club that was only about a mile and a half from where I lived. Right. Well, it was it was a hairband night. Well, they had Poison. Yeah. They had uh, Vince Neil and them, Motley Crue. They had uh, Al Clyde Cooper. Riot. Probably Al they Cooper. Had, I mean, everybody that's in that genre. Oh my gosh! There. I'll tell you. I'll tell you another thing. When I, my dad what a show, but yeah. I'm telling you, there was only about fifty people there. Yeah. And so. My friend and I, my friend, he doesn't like that kind of music, yeah. but uh, I like all music, yes. but he didn't like that kind of music, and he didn't like hair band music, so he said, I've had enough, you ready to go? I said, yeah, I guess so, but what I'm telling you is, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, that night uh, before they were known and had their deal, they had, they drew, all those bands only drew less than 100 people. Right. All right, less than two years later, a year and a half later, they're all on the top ten of MTV. And I know, I right. know. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's yeah like, it was great. It was I, like I told my friend, I said, brother, yeah. there's people that like this music. This, this is something that's coming in now, and it's going to be a big deal. It's like I've well, seen... I don't like that music. I said, well, you're. I'm sorry, but there's too many more people that like that music, and I'll be dead darned if in my... a year and a half those guys were at the top of the chart. My dad got it. Couldn't draw a hundred people. Right. Couldn't draw a hundred people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. My dad got a, my dad my dad got a kick out of it. We, we went to a, a local baseball park right here in town, right, and they had our game changer mm -hmm. wrestling had some wrestling going on, like you know a tent with wrestling and then rock concerts and tons of concerts were going on throughout the ballpark, and uh, it was raining. So me and my dad, I got I got forty dollar tickets for my friend, and I got to see my dad saw Alice Cooper for the first time. We saw Alice Cooper. We didn't know what the hell we were expecting, but it was, we were blown away. It was awesome, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, I met Alice. Uh, Al, the group that I was playing with in yeah. uh, Hollywood, um, we were rehearsing at SIR rehearsal studios. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, all of a sudden, somebody said, hey, Alice Cooper's over there in the aircraft hangar size uh, yeah. 
room. You know, really, it was like aircraft. Pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gigantic. Huge room. And he had all the TV stuff. He had uh, yeah. Chapman cranes in there going up and down. Anyway, so we kind of stumbled over in there, and we stood in the back, a low yeah. profile, and, and sat down and watched the whole tour, the whole show he's going to do for the tour. And when he got through, yeah. he stopped, and he came right up to us and, yeah. and asked us, he says, how do we sound, guys? Do we sound okay? Wow. I'm thinking, my God, uh, uh, Alice, uh, you're asking us? I said, wow, well, this is one of the coolest live shows that I've yeah. ever seen. And he had all the big puppet things. Absolutely. And, uh, I know, that big Frankenstein. Uh, behind everything. Frank, and, Frankenstein and, uh, and this and that. It's crazy. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and, and we were blown away. Well, we were almost speechless. And, mm -hmm. and he was so humble of a guy. I mean, uh, he is really a, a nice, wonderful It was like, like, but to see all the, you know, like the pyrotechnics, because we got really close to the stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they had it all. They, I mean, were, it's they amazing. Were, they were rehearsing the show down to the letter with all the pyro and everything. And the, yeah. Uh, had some background singers running around. And, yeah. A uh, guy running around with his head chopped off and all this stuff. And, yeah. But he was so polite to us. And I always tell people that the biggest mm -hmm. celebrities yes. in the business that I've had a chance to work with or meet are the nicest people. Uh, for Way, way, way back uh, when I worked at Glen Glen in the uh, uh, early 80s, in Hollywood, yeah. uh, Bob Hope came in to do his um, uh -huh. looping, voice looping for his Christmas special. Right. And so he came in, and so my job was the PR guy. I'm the PR guy to mm -hmm. feather dust for the celebrities. And so I said, Mr. Hope, uh, would you like to have uh, calls down to the sound stage, or you want them held, or do you mm -hmm. like any particular foods? Or yeah. He said, first of all, sir, he said, I'm not Mr. Hope. That was my father, and he's dead. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, can I call your uncle Bob? He loved that. He laughed. He said, oh, uh oh, another comedian. He oh, said, man. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, so I said, well, Uncle Bob, I said, um, you know, whatever you need, just let me know. And he said, um, where are you from? And he said, I know you're from the South. I had a heavier Southern accent yeah. back then. And I said, yes, sir, I'm from Somerset, Kentucky, uh, <laughs> not far from Lexington in Louisville. And he said, oh, I love that part of the country and whatever. But he was so humble and nice. And, yeah. And I did realize that the biggest, the big, and I'm talking about the pretty big stars. I'm talking about the icons of all time, even Hulk Hogan. And yeah. Of course, Hulk and I, we got to know each other real well because we traveled over to England and mm -hmm. did BBC TV together. He and Jimmy and I did promote the Wrestling Boot Band album. And, uh, and Hulk liked the muscle cars, and we sat and talked cars all the time and stuff. But uh, Hulk is, uh, Terry is really, uh, the people don't really realize this they don't know him like we like i do but terry is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet mm -hmm. but terry had it rough growing up mm -hmm. uh, terry didn't hulk hogan didn't grow up with a spoon in his mouth and million dollars per show and so no. on no. uh terry was kind of he was kind of the the guy the child that was talked to last and kind of put in a corner and 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 the public doesn't he, he talked about that a little bit in the book, but I'm here to tell everybody that yeah. the real the real Terry Bolle is a wonderful, wonderful, nice person, and really cares about everybody. And, and but he's a quiet person in real life. He's all right, brother. Get yeah. in there, brother. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's his character. It is. But in real life, Terry is so quiet you can hear a pin drop. He, he's just a great guy. He was nice and more than nice to me. He could. Eddie Van Halen told him that if he ever wanted to do any music, just to give him a holler. <laughs> he didn't call Eddie Van Halen, he called me. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you, you know got what blessed. I'm saying? I you were, a whole lot. You and, were blessed. And, you were blessed. I just want to tell the public out there, no matter what you've read, what you've thought, I'm telling you how it is, direct from the horse's mouth, that Terry Hulk Hogan mm. is a really nice person. But he's like all the rest of us in part of times of our lives we've been caught in the middle of yes. disputes and family squabbles and this business is, squabbles yep. and you know it's just these things happen but the real People. person that yeah. Terry really is, is the public doesn't know but I'm just telling everybody out there listening that Hulk Hogan is really He's like he told the people, he said, I think that the person that I, my real person that I am, is I think I'm a pretty good guy. Hulk Hogan, Terry Bolle is a great person. That's mm -hmm. all I'm telling everybody. And I've spent time with him, close, I mean, not at arm's length away, but right with him and flown with him. Yeah. Traveled around the world with him and <clears throat> done music with him and 
mm-hmm. and uh, been with him at the wrestling. Uh, when the wrestling matches was over, he would ask me to come into his dressing room and drink one beer with him. <laughs> you know, he would yeah. always drink one beer yeah. at the end of the show. Yeah. And he would ask me to come in and, and have that beer with him. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, all i got to say is thank you, Hulk, for what you've done for me, and thank you for what you've done for wrestling. Mm-hmm. Now, what wrestling does from here on out is up to wrestling. Yes. But Terry really, uh, Hulk Hogan really Put the bridged the fl- gap yes, and opened a huge door make it possible for a lot of other people you mm-hmm. know that's all i'm saying oh i know i know he was the big you know people really don't realize these guys really are who they are and you know and they just read the negative stuff and yeah. then they jump all over that you know and then move but, on uh, move I'm, on I'm, I'm trying to tell you that he, he's not a negative person no he uh, isn't he really is no he's a positive person no, how many movies has he made? He's made a lot of movies. Come on, we've seen all the movies he's made. No holds barred. You know, I I just saw an advertisement on a poster right, that, right. that guy is going to be on. You know, the black guy Zeus is going to be at a local Comic Con or something. I was like, wow, <laughs> making a first appearance ever. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, Zeus. He gave, a lot of the boys were jealous of him because yeah. he really wasn't a professional wrestler. He's a professional actor. Uh, actor. Yeah. And they were jealous because he came in with such a big panache. So, I know. And uh, they were, a lot of the boys were upset about about that. But, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> you got to put in there what sells the tickets and brings the people in. Yeah, yeah, but nothing beats the Hulk Hogan Annie movies and, <laughs> you know, like the classic. Oh, yeah, uh, Mr. Nanny, my kids, when they were yeah. little, they watched Mr. Nanny about 900 times. Yeah, but now you <laughs> You know, and people people didn't realize, you know what, he was an inspiration, like, you know, growing up, like, even the cartoon, remember the rock and roll, rock and wrestling? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Hulk Hogan rock and yeah, wrestling. And JYD and all of them. And, and, and Hillbilly uh, Jim and... Uh, <laughs> like Suburban all, Commando, that was good, too. Yeah, yeah. Fans, check out the movies from the past. <laughs> you know, great movies to watch any time. Any time you throw it on, <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. People don't watch these things. It's like you look back and you're like, hey, you know what? This is a guy who made a movie and really had a good career. He was in Rocky. Come on, you know. Yeah, well, that was Hulk's big push. Yes, uh, Sylvester so Stallone. He would go to Madison Square and watch all the matches. Mm-hmm. He saw Hulk, and he realized that he could use him in a movie. So, yeah. really, uh, thanks to him, uh, he brought Hulk in. And that right there was the icing on the cake. Uh, after being uh, Thunder Lips and yeah. Rocky, uh, Hulk's career was just over the top. Yeah. Boy, don't you wish you made... Do you wish you were involved with that movie? <laughs> he could have been like, wow. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that would have been fun. But that was right when I was getting involved. Yeah. I remember when I went to, I went to see it at the theater, mm-hmm. and I was so impressed with it. And of course, we were doing a lot of the music and, and doing real well with it. Mm-hmm. So when I left the theater, <clears throat> I went across the street to a car lot mm-hmm. and bought a brand-new Corvette. Yeah. And then from there, everything was straight uphill, brother. It was all great. Everything went good. It did. It did. Man, John, JJ, this was a really great conversation tonight. We killed a lot. We talked a lot. I'd love to have you on again. Oh, I'd love to be be on. You know, I always like to close the show with this thing that I came up with, if I could be so kind to say it, is I always say this. I say, God gave me talent, so I took it to the greatest show on earth. I traveled the world with the greatest of all time, unbelievably entertained people of color in all walks of life. Who knew that wrestling is such a powerful force? I did. Hurricane J.J. McGuire. That's awesome. I like that. But where can everybody else find you on social media? On J.J. McGuire? Yeah, you can find Face- me on Facebook. Facebook. I've, got a, I've got a person that's putting together a professional-looking mm-hmm. website. Oh, cool. I didn't want a jabroni site. I wanted something yes. good. So, <clears throat> but you can see what I'm up to and get some information and whatever at my uh, Facebook page, John Maguire, M-A-G-U-I-R-E. And also, res- uh, Kentucky Zone Wrestling. That's and Kentucky, Z-O-N-E, Zone. Kentucky Zone wrestling and yes uh yeah. i want to just uh, in closing here say that we have Rippick, crutch tomahawk matty b luchador oblivion sully larkin jace thorne michelle myers bombshell big frank banover oh, boy he's a good one uh bw anderson johnny bad johnny suede chris sterling and gunner hash plus a bunch more that come and go so there you are that's kzw all the way baby 
Oh, man, John. This was really... F JJ, I, uh, John, JJ, it don't matter. In Hurricane, I can call you whatever I want, but it doesn't matter. Call the, me whatever you want, just call me. <laughs> absolutely. This was a pleasure to have you on, and I'd love to get back with you and get some of your wrestlers on. I really would like to... We'll, make that happen. We can do that, and we will do that, David. Cause... Thank you so much, and I want to give a big shout-out to all the great people in New Jersey. Yeah. You know, a lot of people make jokes about the hillbillies of Kentucky mm -hmm. and, the, and the jabronis of New Jersey, but you know what? We're a lot alike. It's just that you guys aren't hillbillies, and we are, but otherwise, we're the same. You're right. You know what? Actually, I was born in North Dakota. How's that? <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Well, uh, yeah. Well. Okay. So, <laughs> I am. I don't have the jersey in me, so. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again for being on, and we're gonna have future podcasts, folks. Stay tuned. Maybe we'll talk about Kentucky Zone Wrestling with with John the next time he's around, and uh, his more about. Yes, we'll, yeah, be glad to. And we'll be talk about to. his more about his book when it's out, and much more stay tuned fans oh we were talking sure. oh and all these projects he's got going on too man he's going to be doing some filming and he's working on the big screen and boy he's doing a lot of this and that it's amazing this guy's all out there folks hey, we're, we're working on a thing for kentucky zone wrestling yeah that would give us a worldwide promotion of our it may be the biggest promoted indie thing that's ever happened yet but i can't talk about it just no. yet until we get everything lined up but i'll let you know as soon as i'm not well, then maybe I'll be something I may have to make my appearance at. <laughs> Please do. We'll, we'll throw you right in the ring and see what you can do, brother. Oh, or you'll just put me behind the mic and I'll do something, <laughs> you know. But thank that you for being good, on. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Have a good night. You too. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye yep. now. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, fans, that was a really an amazing podcast tonight with my guest, Hurricane J.J. McGuire. He's the man who wrote a lot of the music growing up through our childhoods of wrestling and theme songs for all the wrestlers. He's done a lot, and uh, he's got a lot more stuff that he's involved in that he people don't talk about, you know, wrestling. He's an owner of Kentucky Kentucky Zone Wrestling, and uh, get out to one of their shows, fans, every Saturday night. Like you said, there's a big show coming up this weekend. Check it out. I'll have it on Facebook for you to plug it and this and that, but I want to say thank you for uh, being on tonight. And uh, you'll never know who will show up on my show. Um, but stay tuned, fans, tomorrow night, Facebook Live, ELS Uncut. With your host Everett Lee and David C. Russell of Deathmatch Russell Podcast, we'll be on the line with Damian Saint of EHF, EHF Entertainment Group, and we'll see what he's been up to and much, much more. And shenanigans. It's going to be a great night. Make sure you check that out at 9 p.m. And much, much more. Stay tuned, fans. And tune in. Good night.